I've been seeing this video all over YouTube and I thought it was about time that I made it. A 25 year old living in London. How much do I spend every single month? This is a great challenge to get a real grasp of what you're spending every single month. And I suggest everyone actually goes, goes and does this. However, I probably don't suggest that you um, post it publicly on YouTube. I decided two days ago to actually make this video and it's gonna be based on the month of July. So as you can see, I haven't budgeted. Let's have a look at what a 25 year old spends living in London in one month. Now, before I go and get into this, if you haven't already subscribed, now is probably the best time to subscribe because it's just down there, right? You just have to click the button. You don't have to go and find anything or do anything. It's just below, it takes like two seconds. So now is the best time to subscribe and I make videos on print on demand, affiliate marketing, you know, Amazon FBA, making money online, this interesting life stuff. And yeah, so hit that button and let's get right into the video. I live in a two bed flat in London, which costs 1,117 pounds and 76 pence, right? This is for a mortgage, not for renting. And I think it's a pretty good deal because if I was paying rent, I would end up paying around 1750, maybe even 1800 pounds for this flat. As well as living in a flat, you've got all the expenses that come with living in a flat, like council tax, electricity, heating, water, you know, Wi-Fi, all these other little things that come with living in a flat and that comes to £399.32. Now this brings my total living expenses to £1,517.08, which in my mind really isn't bad considering a large portion of that is actually going to paying off my flat, which is an appreciating asset and is actually worth more now than when I bought it. The next one is food. Now food is a tricky one because I barely ever eat. I eat a very little amount of food. And when I do eat, I tend to, you know, go that morning and buy my food for that day and then cook it throughout the day and eat like that. So that's actually quite an expensive way of doing it. I could be a lot smarter here and shop in Costco, you know, bulk buy for a month or a couple of months and really stock up food. But for some reason I don't do that. And I think it's just because I don't eat that much food. But when I get onto a normal diet, I'll probably start doing that. But anyways, food every month comes to around 250 pounds and that's just for myself. That brings the total living expenses to 1,000 seven hundred and sixty seven pounds and eight eight zero eight and eight pence now i have quite a few monthly expenses as well so let's just quickly go through those we have netflix come on who doesn't have netflix especially during lockdown i mean netflix was a lifesaver so we've got netflix we've got amazon prime we've got disney plus i know i have i have too many watching uh, subscriptions but I don't have YouTube premium yet that's a good one but anyways I've got those three subscriptions which comes to around 20 pounds and 90 pence a month then I have my phone contract my phone contract comes to 33 pounds a month and as well as that I seem to be everything Apple Apple phone Apple computer you know iPad all that kind of stuff I used to have a PC but we're not going to talk about that so because I have Apple everything I need Apple iCloud. And Apple iCloud costs a whopping six pounds and 99 pence, which is actually ridiculous when you think about it. And then on top of Apple iCloud, I also have Google Drive, which is one pound 59 every single month. I don't know why I have both of them. I could probably cancel one of them, but you know, you know that feeling when you kind of spread your photos and your files all over the cloud in all different places, and you kind of dig yourself this hole where you can't actually get out of it because you don't know what's where and where's what, and where everything is basically. And if I cancel Google Drive, I don't know what I'm deleting. And if I cancel iCloud, I don't know what I'm deleting. So I have dug myself in this hole and I've also got Dropbox by the way, but I'm not gonna include that because that's a business expense. So yes, Apple iCloud and Google Drive. And finally, as well as those things, I also have a few direct debits, just, you know, things I've bought over the years, couches, whatever that I've done over is zero percent interest-free basically direct debit and that comes to a total of 570 pounds and 77 pence so the total for personal monthly direct debits comes to 633 pounds and 33 34 pence now of course those things were totally personal and they don't come with the expense of living in london but 
I had to put them in there because they are part of my expenses and I'm working out my expenses in this video. So that brings our total so far to a whopping 2,442 pence for the month. But it's not over yet. This is where things get pretty messy. So as well as all of that, I've had some splurging moments. I like to call them splurging. Splurging means when you spend excess amounts of money that you probably shouldn't have. So I've had some splurging moments this month and let's start with the first splurge, which is Bista Village. We went to Bista Village, me and a few friends, and I actually only set myself a budget of 150 pounds, which I did stick to. So that is an extra 150 pounds on the total here. Now, just in case anyone doesn't know, Bista Village is like a shopping outlet. It's quite a nice shopping outlet with all the brands and everything. And to be honest, I probably didn't have to buy anything, but it was like a day out with a couple of friends. And I'm happy I set myself that budget, otherwise I probably would have gone a bit overboard. Now, we also began this month with redoing my flat, which is kind of annoying because this isn't a normal expense every single month. But, you know, it's just one of those splurge moments. So we repainted, we redecorated, we got some new furniture because the reason we decided to redo the flat now is hopefully I'm getting married in a month and me and my future wife decided we wanted to, you know, kind of make the flat ours together. So we ended up spending around £358 on paint and decorative materials and furniture and stuff like that, which actually isn't a crazy amount of money considering we pretty much redid the whole flat. There are still things we've left out which will come in future months, but that's what we spent this month on redoing parts of the flat, I should say. Now, it's not realistic to go an entire month without spending any money on a takeout. So we did actually buy a couple of takeouts, which ended up costing us 22 pounds. Now, after watching quite a few of these other YouTube videos, I have to say 22 pounds in one month for takeouts really is not that bad. There are people who have spent 22 pounds a day on takeouts. So 22 pounds for the entire month on takeouts, I think is actually pretty good. So well done me for budgeting. Now, we've also had a few purchases on Amazon this month. Yay, Amazon. So as well as everything else, the Amazon purchases this month were, well, we had a business book costing 11 pounds 89 pence, a mountain biking backpack costing 30 pounds and 87 pence, and some computer USB-C adapters because this Mac is absolute and it needs a lot of adapters, and that cost £68.98. However, the one I bought was broken, so I have returned that and got a full refund, so I still need to actually buy that, but I'm gonna include that in this month's cost anyways because I know I'm gonna buy another one. Now, in the month of July, we actually went away, a couple of us, to Scotland. We rented a very, very large, very nice house, I would say, and we just did a little getaway for a couple of days and that was actually really, really fun. And I think it was three or four days and that cost 130 pounds per person. So that's an extra 130 pounds on this month. But again, these aren't things that happen every single month. So it's not, this isn't your typical month. This is probably quite an expensive month and I don't know the full, full amount yet. We're gonna find out in a second, but from what I'm feeling right now is this is quite an expensive month. This brings my total of splurging to 771 pounds and 74 pence. So this brings our grand total to 3,172 pounds and 16 pence. That is a lot of money to spend in one month. Now, just as a side note, I wanna say I do have other expenses, but they are business expenses like Premiere Pro and you know Photoshop and Dropbox. And these expenses do cost every single month, but that is a business expense and it's covered by the business. So I didn't wanna talk about it here because this is just you know personal expenses and how much I'm spending from my personal accounts every single month, or not every single month, just in the month of July. My month do not look like this usually. Now, this isn't a typical what it costs to live in London, as a 25 year old, the actual cost of living in London as a 25 year old was 1,767 pounds and eight pence. Those are my must have costs. Those are my living costs, my living expenses, those kind of things. Everything else is just extra. So you could technically get away with spending that amount of money. I'm really happy I did this video because it's allowed me to really track my expenses in the month of July. And not only that, I want to see where I can improve. And one thing's for certain, I want to spend a lot less in the month of August. So I think 
I really, really think everyone should go and do this. Don't make it public, right? This is this is just because I have a YouTube channel and it's content. Um, but I would suggest everyone go, goes and does this, right? Look at all your expenses for the month of July and just have a look at how much you spent, how much you could have saved, you know, all these things you bought. Were they worthwhile? Do you even care that you bought some of them? And just see if you can have a better month in August. So after finishing this video and really, you know, seeing all my expenses, I have to say my one goal for next month is to spend a lot less money and a lot less money. And annoyingly, it's especially now in 2020, it's become so easy to spend money with, you know, one click Amazon purchases, stupidly crazy credit card limits. It's just, it's easier more than ever before to actually spend your money, which makes saving so much harder, which is why doing something like this is so unbelievably important because saving and investing is the number one priority when it comes to what you should be doing with your money. I do think it's actually okay to spend a bit of money on things you enjoy because obviously you want to enjoy life. So definitely go and spend money on things that you want to enjoy, but just do it within reason. As long as you, you know, have some money to invest, have some money saving, then yeah, of course, put some money into something you want to do. Maybe it's an experience, maybe it's a materialistic item, whatever it could be. And I just wanna say, I really enjoyed this budgeting video and I'm thinking of doing one in August as well. And if you would like to see that, let me know in the comments down below because it would 100% hold me accountable on actually spending less in the month of August, which I know is gonna be a difficult one because again, I need to finish off redoing our flat, which is gonna to come to quite a bit of money. So I just wanna say thank you very, very much for watching. Really appreciate it. If you are new here, again, don't forget to subscribe. I bring videos out on Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And I just wanna say finally, once again, Thank you so much for watching.